So it is time to talk about leads. Leads, 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 leads. Hey there, my loves. Welcome back to CPTV. I'm CP and you are in the place for aspiring and growing entrepreneurs who want to turn their passions into businesses and their businesses ultimately into freedom. If that sounds good to you, go ahead and subscribe because every single Tuesday I am giving you the training on the step-by-step -step business processes and systems that you should implement immediately into your business and life so you can get to that level of entrepreneurial freedom that you deserve and desire. So you heard me go ahead and hit that subscribe button boo and click that bell so you don't miss any of it. And of course, if you like it, then show me. Smash that like button and tell me what you think in the comments below. So it is time to talk about leads. Leads, 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 leads. Yes, I know that sounded cool. I know, right? But anyway, it's the number one thing that we're always trying to get, right? Trying to find, trying to attract as business owners, isn't it? Because when you have a business and you're ultimately selling something, um, a lead is a potential customer that might be a good fit to buy your product or service. So it's a constant thought in every entrepreneur's mind. We're always trying to figure out where to find them, how to get more, how to attract them. And I agree. And over the years, I have done a million different things to attract and get leads. I have bought them, I have purchased them, I have forced them, and I have attracted them. And I feel like it's an important conversation to have, especially when you're starting your business, just getting started, or even scaling your business, it's critical. So I decided to pull out the big guns because it is 2021 and there are some new ways, efficient ways, better ways, and sexy ways to get leads into your business so that you can sell millions of dollars worth of your stuff to them. And I want to focus in this episode on some amazing, sexy lead generating strategies that you should consider in 2021 to help grow your business. And when I say big guns, I mean, I'm bringing in some help. A student of mine who has not only built an amazingly successful business of her own, but she specializes in helping other entrepreneurs generate leads, generate sales, build sales funnels, and amazing brands. And she is letting me pick her expert brain and she will be definitely dropping some golden nuggets on you. So if you are looking for some out of the box, sexy, amazing new 2021 lead generating strategies that you can incorporate into your business today to generate sales tomorrow, then keep watching. Let's get to work. Well, I am so excited to have you Me here too. today. I, you know, it's just it's so much love between us. I mean, it, it, it's so crazy, our story and how we met, but I mm -hmm. want to make sure that I have, we'll talk about that. We'll talk about that. Um, <laughs> but I want to make sure that everybody here today knows who you are and we can get into our discussion and have some fun. Um, and I want everybody on CPTV to meet Tadon. Thank I you. absolutely love her. Tadon is one of my I've met her actually as, as a student um, yes. in a, a in a program that I was teaching in and I was an advisor on and overseeing emerging entrepreneurs. Mm -hmm. We used to go to class down at Cleveland State University in a hoopla. Yeah. Um, and that was the first time that I met you when you were really getting started in your entrepreneurial journey, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, it was the yes. beginning. Um, and that was, how many years ago was that now? Six? That was like five or six years I, ago now. now. Yeah, yeah. this is my seventh year in business now. It is. And so yeah. you you were you were always though, even at that point, even as a student, um, even in our class, I recognize that you were always really on a different level. 
mm-hmm. um, than than most startup entrepreneurs that I had come across or coached or worked with prior to, because you definitely were not in a space where you didn't know exactly what you wanted and what your vision was for your business. Um, yeah. I think that that was one of the, the differentiating pieces for me. It was like, um, even though you were starting, you were really busy starting. Like you were like, this is it. This is what I'm going to do. This is the rest of my life. I'm going to be an entrepreneur. I'm going to be driving a business and I ain't got time to play. You weren't playing with your business. You weren't doing it part time. Mm-hmm. No, you weren't doing it. And I love (laughs) that about you. I love that about you. And even the direction that you were going, because I could tell that it was very progressive. Like, you know, the digital marketing angle was so new, especially in our area. And um, you were just, you and I, we we can have conversations about digital marketing (laughs) platforms and stuff. For hours. Yes. Does that make us I think that makes us some kind of weird nerds or something, don't you think? Yeah, but but we're but we're the cool chic nerds though. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Yes, that makes me feel good. So let me introduce you. Terdon Debo has had an affinity for creative and entrepreneurship all of her life. After finding a passion for creative branding and digital marketing, she decided to launch Creative Thought Solutions, which has provided services for AT&T, the Urban League of Greater Cleveland, Caesars Casino, and hundreds of other businesses all across the world. She has grown that business from a one-woman show to a team of 10 people specializing in finding creative solutions for companies and helping them accelerate their growth. She is considered the go-to expert when it comes to helping grow and scale service-based businesses, and she specializes and helping industry leaders connect thought leadership to digital marketing so they can explode their brand and business past the six and seven figure mark. As a business growth coach, Terdon combines coaching, strategy, consulting, and implementation through her agency to drive maximum results for her clients. Now, this is the fun stuff, right? Because Terdon has been featured in so many media outlets since (laughs) since that beginning six years ago. You've been in Forbes, Authority Magazine as the leader in your industry. You've also got great partnerships going on, Microsoft, Young Entrepreneur Institute. And in 2020, you did something really big in the midst of this pandemic. You founded ClubhouseDaily.com. When Clubhouse came out, you jumped all over it. And now you have the largest Facebook group for business owners using Clubhouse to help them understand how to leverage their time on Clubhouse and to achieve maximum impact, income, and strategic um, connections. So you have been busy, 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 busy. <laughs> That's awesome. That, that, yes. that, that piece. And I remember, um, you were still just as beautiful. You were still just as focused and you were still just as much of a hustler when I met you <laughs> six years ago in that class. Um, and we had so much fun and it was always like, you were always, you you were such a CEO, you know, like your big visionary. Ooh. And then you were like, all right, but I got to make sure from the beginning, you've had a team, even when you couldn't afford a team, or at least you most people would <laughs> yes. support a team, which I also right. thought was amazing. Um, because I, most entrepreneurs or startup entrepreneurs that I work with or coach or teach, that is the last it's, it's like me pulling teeth to say you gotta you oh, gotta yeah. hold your team with, even when you're not ready, right? Right, right. But with that being said, I mean, tell me a little bit about your story. Um, share with us oh. the challenges that you faced what you're doing to overcome them, some of your beliefs, kind of walk us through um, then and now. You know how that, that Facebook or social media thing that's going on, where we started, oh, where we are now. Right, so, right. So, where we are now. Tell us where we are and we'll like make sure we got some graphics in here right now <laughs> <laughs> that shows where we started and where you are now. Oh, now this is a story all about how. <laughs> My life got flipped, turned upside down. <laughs> yes, um, it all started. When I was starting, uh, I was the executive producer of a new show that we were launching called What's Good Cleveland. And the day that we were shooting the pilot, I was just so excited. I'm like, this is great. I was off work that day. And I was like, hey, to my partner at the time, I was like, hey, can you take me to go grab my check from work real quick? Um, I'll go grab it. And then we're going to roll. We're going to shoot this pilot episode. So I walk in there. Uh, I'm on. I'm on cloud nine. I'm like, we're about to do this thing. I'm excited about it. And then they were like, Hey, we have your check, but can you come in here? We got to talk to you for a minute. And so I'm like, 
okay. And it was just like the equivalent of how a man feels when he, when his girlfriend or wife says, honey, we need to talk. I'm like, oh no, <laughs> like, what does this mean? And so I would go in there and they're like, you know what? We have to let you go. I'm like on my day off. Like I felt like Craig on Friday. I'm like, I'm getting fired on my day off. How the hell are you going to get fired on your day off? I don't know. <laughs> so I'm like, this cannot be happening. And when I saw so I'm that just was the stuck. universe girl smacking you in the face. The universe is like, you haven't been listening, so we have to do something drastic. We have to fire you on your day off. <laughs> right. I'm like, is this a joke? Mm-mm. Or what's going on here? And it wasn't April 1st, so it was not April Fools at that time. And so I'm just like stunned. I have my last check and I'm like, what am I about to do? So I walk out and my Drico, uh, Drico, who's my partner at the time, he was just like, just go with your business. And I was just like, no, I'm not ready for this. I'm not ready. I don't, I don't feel like, I, like, I'm just not ready for this. He was like, dude, just start your business. I'm like, <sighs> okay. I'm like, I don't know how I'm about to do this. You know, three kids at the time, they were, they were a lot younger than they were now. I'm like, okay, I don't know how I'm about to do this. I don't know how it's going to work, but I'm just going to go for it. And I was just like, okay, I'm doing this. And I jumped off the cliff of entrepreneurship. And I was just like, I'm just going to build my wings on the way down. And that has been what it's been ever since. And there are times when that wing has been flopping and it's been one wing and I don't know if I'm going to make it. (laughs) But then there are other times now where I feel like I'm soaring and I'm coming back up to fly over that same cliff. And so um, during that journey, it was just like, okay, you know, who am I? (laughs) Because entrepreneurship is less about what you're doing, but it's more about who you're becoming in the process of what you're doing. And so uh, I had to really define like, who am I? What do I want to be known for in this space? And I had to kind of stick with that. But there were a lot of things to overcome in the process because first, before anything with entrepreneurship, it's mindset. And so I had so many things that I had to overcome. I had to overcome the fears or like, am I even worthy to do this? Or what makes me think that I can help somebody else when I'm just starting out myself to be able to do this. And even though I had the skills and I did have some experience because I had worked in other agencies and, and, and I went to school for graphic design and I studied digital marketing, I still didn't feel confident enough in my abilities. And I still wasn't quite as clear on what I needed to do. And that's what a lot of entrepreneurs go through that oh I need God. now. <laughs> it is so crazy how long I feel like even as an entrepreneur, I've been doing this for 20 over 20 years. And I feel like I'm always striving for that clarity, right? Yeah. It's like it's like some you, you it's like you get to a certain point. I think it's because we're entrepreneurs, honestly. I think it's because we always come up with new crap. That's what the problem yeah. is. That, that is it. We start somewhere, we get real good clarity, we go all in, we make some money, and then we're like, I want to come up with something new to confuse me. Right? Yeah. <laughs> That's what we do. That's exactly what it is. And then you see all the mathematical equations because you just confused yourself and you're trying to like make sense of what you just did. But, but so, that that journey that you're describing is so beautiful, isn't it? It is. I mean, it's it beautiful. Is. Um, the, the growth that you achieve. And then there is nothing more rewarding. And you can attest to this because of um, the transformation that you've experienced and where you are now versus mm-hmm. where you were then. There is nothing more rewarding than achieving something that you perceive to be that goal, that success that you wanted, whatever you had in your mind. Because even if you make vision boards and you write them all down, there's still those things in the back of our minds as entrepreneurs that we don't share. We don't publicly put out there. That Even the small wins that when they happen to us, we're like, this is why I'm addicted. This is why I'm addicted. Seriously. Or just the freedom. Yes. Yes. This is the freedom that comes with it. Cause it's like, even though it's tough, even though at first you're not having the first, you are working more hours than you would ever work working for someone else. At first you're, you are doing that. Um, but at the same time, it's like, but I still am doing it for me. (laughs) I'm doing it for like, no one's telling me what to do. Like I get to build this and figure it out on myself. Like we're on track now this year for seven figures, but I would have never gotten that working for someone else for seven years. I just would, I would have just kept getting an incremental $1 raise. (laughs) And like, 
I get to give myself a raise when I feel yes. like it. Yeah. So yeah. Um, and, and that's the part too, is that I, that's why I, I reach, I changed my name to creative thought solutions is because as entrepreneurs, we are the leaders of solving some of the biggest problems that the world has seen. They count on entrepreneurs to solve these problems. And then we call them businesses. Yeah. That's what it is. We come up with creative solutions to be able to help whoever with whatever in so many different areas. And if there were no entrepreneurs and business owners, there would be no economy. There would be no economy. There would be no convenience, the, the convenience yeah. that the world experiences, mm-hmm. um, especially in the U.S., where both of us are based. Right. Because we have a lot yeah. of people that watch CPTV from outside of the U.S., but especially where we're based. Mm-hmm. Um our convenience has been created because entrepreneurs develop solutions to inconveniences, you know, yeah, exactly like, like the pool noodle. Come on now. <laughs> right. You know what I'm saying? Every time I shell out $50 for 10 pool noodles, I'm thinking to myself, this dude is brilliant because I have yes. to buy new ones every year. It's not like people hold on to these awkwardly shaped things all the time. <laughs> right? You know, I'm sure there's somebody out there who has a storage base for the pool noodle, but I don't. I buy them on vacation. I leave them and donate them to the hotel or to the resort or whatever because we're not traveling with them. But that yeah. guy gets 50 bucks out of me every single year because it is a solution. And I'm not going to lie, I be in the pool on my noodle too. You know what I mean? <laughs> right. <laughs> right. That was the inconvenience. How do I sit and chill and talk, still look cute, but mm-hmm. float at the same time. <laughs> but float. Exactly. And that's it. That's it. It's as we're going through life and things are continuing to evolve, then it's, there's always going to be a, a problem or inconvenience that someone is going to need fixed. Yep. And so like that's when the entrepreneurial part takes over. Right. It's like, oh, I can create something for this and I can be that solution and I can solve this market problem. Absolutely. So your business has transformed a lot from the very beginning, right? From from the amount mm-hmm. of customers that you were doing, even the types of services that you were doing from the very yes. beginning. Yes. Um, and, you know, I remember we focused a lot, well, at least I focus a lot with you on like infrastructure and I focus a lot with you on like your processes and the yes. things that behind the scenes of your business. But you focus a lot on driving leads into yes. not only your business, but all the entrepreneurs that you work for, that you work Absolutely. for in their business. So Let's talk about leads a little bit because I want to get the the scoop. All right. 2021 top three lead strategies that you see taking hold, changing the game for a lot of entrepreneurs and are, is going to impact them the same way that you were impacted by some strategies that you were learning mm-hmm. six years ago. Which top three strategies would you say? are going to just change the game that every single entrepreneur, every single person that's watching this episode would want to at least try one of in 2021. Yes. So you're going to, so there are lanes, just like there's lanes on the freeway, there's lanes to, to lead generation. And so you know that if you're in the left lane, like you're going to be going fast. You want to, you want to get there, move out of my way. Like I'm going fast. You know, if you're in the middle, you're, you know, you're around the speed limit. You're going at a, at a good enough play, pace that is in the slow lane. Hey, you know that you're going to get there when you get there and you know that you're just making consistent effort to get there. And so when it comes to leads, it's the same way. And so when people are thinking about leads and thinking about a, a overall long long-term strategy, that's the slow lane, but it feeds into all the other things that you do. So that's going to be your content creation um, and consistent, like really, I, it, it's, I deal with a lot of entrepreneurs and the part that people get stuck on is the content marketing piece. Like this is a never ending machine. Like you never ending. have to feed it. It's, it does not end. You always have to be nurturing and, and introducing people to you. And so that's where like your social media comes in. That's when your, your email marketing, but even before then, cause you're even before they get to the email list is really going to be picking a lane um, even on social media. And so if you're, if you're wanting to, you know, just, nurture leads or or get people introduced to you um, in a fun way. Honestly, businesses going on TikTok have been doing really well. Um, If you're if you're like, okay, like I want to show my personality, I want to be able to show these concepts in in a in a fast way. It's TikTok. If you're like, okay, I want to be able to be 
visual, but I also want to be able to um, kind of nurture. I want to be able to use visuals and, and words and all of that. Then you can use Instagram for that. Instagram is great for being able to just hop on there and you can, it could be curated content. You're able to go live on there. You're able to um, do reels on there. So it can still be fun, but you, you still have the element of, okay, um, I can do a carousel where I'm just teaching something where people can, can really save it and know that I'm the expert here and I can position myself or it could just be a video. I did a video where I went to social media examiner. I jumped on the table and I just, you know, and it was fun. Um, but then I also have ones where it's like, a, it's a long form video where I'm able to teach something over a period of time and I'm able to really nurture the audience. And then this leads into the next one, which is clubhouse clubhouse and Instagram are tied into each other. So the better you can get on Instagram, if you do decide to use clubhouse, which is honestly is in, in the terms of organic traffic is one of the best organic traffic. It's a, it's a fast lane for organic traffic. And there wasn't really one before without paid ads. Mm -hmm. And so if you don't want to use paid ads, but you still want to convert a lot of leads, then clubhouse is where it's at. Like Mm -hmm. clubhouse is where it's at. I've literally been able to add another six figures to my business in the span of four to five months just by using Clubhouse. And it's all organic. It's all free. Um, And this is when you have to get really strategic about it. And you have to go in there with an intention because otherwise, you know, you can get caught up in the Clubhouse cycle where you're on there for 10 to 12 hours. I know some people that have spent 16 hours a day on Clubhouse um, to and they're adding value and all of those things. But what it is, is it's an audio based platform. And Mm -hmm. so, think about if if social media met podcasting then and they had a baby it would be clubhouse um, because so they did have a baby they did have a baby they did have a baby and it's clubhouse you can get caught up i have been in clubhouse and you know i am i'm a i'm a person that's like i listen to podcasts and everything and books, you know, that's my thing. I mean, I do that more than I watch TV. So Clubhouse is a perfect fit for me, especially as background Mm -hmm. information, right? So one of the things that I love about it is that you can still be working, like if you're reviewing, um, if I'm reviewing sales pages or if I'm reviewing opt-in pages, or I have like a list of things that my team is done with and they're like, this all needs review. And I'm just looking and reading. Clubhouse is my favorite go-to. More so now, it's actually overtaken for me podcasts. Um, because they're like mm-hmm. real in real time podcasts. Exactly. I love. I love that. And it's interactive. So you can never go on, a, like listen to a podcast and then raise your hand and ask the person a question that's being interviewed or the panel a question that are, that are talking. Now this gives you the ability to do, to do that. And, and with major players, not just like, this is not just like, oh, you know, I, I heard someone cool and I got on stage and I talked to them like, no, you can literally, it could be a Lewis house or it could be, um, um, a Gary V or it could be a Grant Cardone and yeah. you listen to them talking and you raise your hand and next thing you know, you're talking to them in right. real time and asking them questions. And so not only that, but when you're curating your own rooms or when you're, um, you know, a part of someone else's rooms is what they call. And it's kind of like having an event. It's like having an online event and, the, and they call them rooms on Clubhouse, but then you're able to lead traffic directly to your Instagram page. And so from there, it's like the, the Clubhouse is the instant experience experience because people are cycling in and out and it's an on-demand type of a type of deal. So once the room is over, it's over. They don't record these rooms. And so you have to be there to get that. But then when you want to nurture, then you get your Instagram going and you make sure that the people that connected with you, because every time I talk, every time I speak on there, I get a flood of people. I've, I've gained like 5,000 followers off of just Instagram from Clubhouse. Mm-hmm. And so if they want to hear more from you, then they're going to follow you. And then you're going to want to nurture them with the content there. And so that's going to be the slower route is the nurturing piece. But also if you have a system in place, um, which we do now, in which I have a social media manager that just goes in and marks those DMs that people are are, are doing and they're able to, based on what they're DMing me, you know, send them to a free group, send them to a a lead magnet, send them to, um, send them to a paid, uh, like a paid training 
training that we're doing, send them to a book a call with me so that then um, for the higher ticket things, I'm able to convert them into our higher ticket offers. And so all of it has to be strategic and one feeds into the other. But I would say in the in the slow, in the slow lane, my number one would be Clubhouse. Um, and, and even with LinkedIn, um, you still have to do the nurturing and you still have to go in there. And if you're selling higher end services, LinkedIn is where it's at. But it does also require like a learning curve and you have to do a lot and you have to do the nurturing piece and all of that in LinkedIn too. With Clubhouse, it's really instant. Someone yeah. can come in and hear you and connect with you and really connect with you. I've converted so much better because it's almost like having a webinar in which you build no like and trust very, very quickly. And then by the time you hop on the phone with someone, um, a lot of times people are just like, oh, you sold me in the room. They're already ready so just, to convert. They're already ready to yep. convert. Yeah. Exactly. I, I, I was just doing that actually. And Tardon has mentioned a couple of really good things. One of them is about the content and the social, man, uh, so, social media. So I want to make sure that we go ahead and link to both of those videos. Those are recent videos that we did. We talked about um, the marketing process, a basic marketing process that entrepreneurs can make. We're going to link to that one right here, right now, That because I do go into social media and I do go into content and that kind of will give you guys a basis understanding of what she's just explaining. And then there's also another one that that will lead you to specifically surrounding um, creating social media content, how I create my YouTube videos and also what our process looks like for creating content. Because everything that Tardon is saying right now is so important. And as you can hear, she's she's talking about the step-by-step -step that she does. So everything, she just walked you through in that beautiful mind of hers, her <laughs> process, right? She spends time on Clubhouse. She provides valuable content. She sends them to her Instagram. That's step two. They go into her DMs. Someone from her team, step three, marks those and sends them to the appropriate converting lead magnet or whatever it is. Step four, they convert. Step five, she schedules a call or she sends them to something free to continue to nurture them. All of that. So this is her strategy, right? This is the lead gathering strategy using someone that I think I can tell that she loves, especially because she's become an expert in it, like Clubhouse. So I want you guys to take note of that process that she's talking yes. about because it is so important. And you heard her say she's added six figures to her business in the last four months because she has a strategic lead generation process. She's just not out there all willy nilly giving out stuff and not doing nothing to convert that stuff. Right. Right. Exactly. Is, is, exactly. Is, we, we talked about that before we actually started recording and we started recording y'all just because our conversation was so good before we started. So recording. good. But it's all, yeah. it always is. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, we just got to start recording because this is some good stuff and let's get into it too. So that I think is so important for, for, mm -hmm. for you to, you have a process for converting those people as well. Oh, absolutely. Right? Absolutely. And there's like three different ways that you can do it. Um, I'll give you, I'll give you a couple of secrets, but um and I'm going to get into this on my third thing that I talk about for lead generation. But when you get people to from Clubhouse to DM you, they automatically become an audience for when you're ready for running ads. And so um, just by them DMing you, when you're ready to put an offer in front of them, the people you're able to then nurture them and convert them through an ad campaign. And so that's another thing, too. And then if you're... Um, if your if people are going into your DM as well, because they can get flooded, you could also use a third party tool like Ingrammar to be able to then, if you're telling them to, hey, DM me this particular word, then you can itemize them by that word and you can have something in place. And we're in actually in the process too of building out chat bots around it. So if they DM us a certain word, then we're having a conversation to lead them automatically in there. So it's not manual anymore. So, so chat bot. So I don't know, our customer service, I don't know if I told you this already, when we had dinner last time, but we converted to Freshdesk as our customer service uh, system. Oh, okay. And it, it it connects to all of your social media. And I just oh, discovered, cool. just so you know, because you might want to look into this since you're in that process, that they also have automatically included in most of the plans as chat box. Oh, nice. Yes. So you can tie nice. them to your IG, your Facebook, your LinkedIn. I think they're tied to all of ours. And all of our messenger messages or any kind of DMs, they automatically come in. They create a customer service ticket. They mm -hmm. automatically get assigned to my social media manager. So when she logs in, all she sees is those. And if okay. it's the basic one that they've asked for something like work with CP, then the chat bot automatically responds and sends them my scheduler link. So that so fresh nice. desk does that, but it also fresh can be desk. your ticketing system. Let me go Check ahead and put that. this in my notes real quick. Mm -hmm. This is what we do, y'all. This is what we do. Tell me about clubhousedaily.com. So clubhousedaily.com was a community that I built because business owners were like, 
getting on there and they're just like, <laughs> I don't even know where to start with this. I don't understand what to do. And when I, and I can't be on here all day, I'm a CEO, I'm running companies. I'm, I got a family. I can't be on here all day. So I need a place to know where to go for notes or how I catch up on clubhouse or how I even use this for my business. And so um, when I got on clubhouse, I, there were so many digital marketers and brand people. And I was just like, there's a ton of these people. I need a creative way to be able to connect and build um, and, and make an, and position myself on here so that I can stand out in my marketplace um, on this app. And so then I'm just like, okay, I am, I bought, a, I bought like 20 domains at that time around Clubhouse. I was like, okay, what can I do? I'm like, okay, people want more support after Clubhouse because when the rooms are over, they're over and they don't get a chance to either ask the questions or maybe they're too shy to raise their hand. And so then I created a Facebook group and I was just like, okay, so how do I turn this into a lead generator for myself and for my business? I said, okay, so in order for them to get to the Facebook group, they're going to have to opt into a page. And so I built a landing page <laughs> that then had an opt-in that, that captured burst. I'm about to burst. Okay. <laughs> so then I had an opt-in page that required their phone number and their email so that I can do text and email marketing. And that was the price of admission. Yeah. And because I knew that people wanted it, um, I, I wrapped it in one of the domains, clubhousedaily.com. I had the landing page. And then when they got to the thank you page, that's when they got the link to the actual group to go ahead and be a part of it. And so um, that grew our email list by thousands. <laughs> it grew it by thousands. And so we were able to have thousands of people added to our list just by coming up with a creative way to generate those leads. Because sometimes you just have to think outside the box. If people are zigging, I want to zag because I know that everyone's zigging. And yeah. so um, that's why I created Clubhouse Daily because I'm like, hey, what, is the, what is the gap in the marketplace? What is the um, inconvenience? Problem, right. What is, the, what, is, what, is, what is the problem? What is the solution that I what's can provide? My, what's my spongy noodle? Yes. What is, what is the noodle? What is the noodle? I need to know. And I need to throw it up on the wall and see if it sticks. Yes. So, see if I float, right? And see if I float. And so that's what Clubhouse Daily became. And then that became what I became known for. Yes, because you are with- the Clubhouse expert. You yeah, are. I'm the official Clubhouse expert for Social Media Examiner, which is the largest social media <laughs> um, uh, marketing platform like in the world. <laughs> and so if someone, if someone goes on Club, I mean, and this is this is this is the truth, y'all, because, you know, I, I remember seeing uh, Turdon's post about Clubhouse and I had already received a couple of invitations from people. And I was like, I ain't got time for this platform, too. Y'all. Yep. <laughs> I was supposed to be focusing on learning TikTok. I, I can't take on another platform, but I started singing. I'm like, if Turdon says it's a good one, I should probably check it out. So then when I got on Clubhouse and realized, wow, you know, this is a, a, a place full of experts teaching, you know, like mm-hmm. this is my YouTube videos and my podcasts that I watch kind of in one because mm-hmm. it's relevant today, like right now. And that's what I love about it. And, yeah. um, and then I realized, Tardon has found her niche or niche or niche or whatever part of the world you're from niche, niche, this is it. And, you know, when I, then of course I would, it would pop up that you were in a room and I'm like, what what, what are we talking about over here? And you were (laughs) always telling people how to maximize utilization of the platform. And Mm -hmm. And that's really when you think about all of the um, marketing specialists and the digital marketing experts like yourself that focus in on that area, they have all become uh, super, super, super rich. I'm going to keep it real. Super, super, super rich by focusing in on one platform and mastering that platform. Mm -hmm. And Clubhouse is your platform. So you think that's the number one strategy, don't you? I do. When it comes to organic traffic. That's the number one strategy because uh, like Clubhouse for me has even worked better than some of our paid ads with driving traffic, like driving traffic to take action specifically. And because of the formatting of it, because people feel connected to you through your voice, they don't see your face. They don't judge you off of looks. They're listening to what you're saying and they're connecting to what you're saying. And so that makes it a a super good lead Mac lead generator and conversion tool yeah. because then people convert to take some type of action and sometimes the action is just following you on Instagram but that's an action so that's like lead generation and conversion at its finest um, on every level whether it's them 
following you, whether it's them hopping in the DM, whether it's them booking a call, whether it's them joining a Facebook group, whether it's like all of these different things and what you can tell them to do. Um, I know someone who she went on there and she already had like her thing, her thing laid out, her funnel laid out, and she was able to generate about a half a million dollars <laughs> in, in four months um, just by that. And I've seen people do book launches in there where they give a coupon code and then, and they're like the, the coupon code is only as good as us being in this room right now. And then they generate 20,000 in that out in that few hours that they're on clubhouse. And so it's like for you not to pay for that and be able to get that type of lead leads and the conversion. ROI. Yeah, that ROI. Um, and, and it's really about the intention that you set with your strategy. So I don't even say return on investment with ROI. I say it's your return on your intention. Like yeah. if you have the intention to go in there and add value in a strategic way, you will win. Yeah. Yeah. And, and one of the things that I've also learned from you from watching you, and I haven't joined Clubhouse Daily yet because I'm trying to just finish up where I am yeah. first quarter. <laughs> but um, I also know that for me, I have been spending my time on Clubhouse really in, in my phase, which is phase two for me, which is research and mm -hmm. really finding out the pain points that exist with my ICAs. I love Clubhouse mm -hmm. for that purpose where I used to oh, spend yeah. time, you know, stalking in Facebook groups. Now I can be multitasking, doing mm -hmm. something else and just listening to the needs of my ICA. And one thing exactly. that I did I, that I do know is, so everyone's asking me, CP, when are you going to go full fledged on Clubhouse? You got all this content that you can repurpose. I mean, literally step-by-step mm -hmm. -step content. And really, you know, my dig I see this audience being a perfect fit um, for either my coaching services or my digital products. And there's one mm -hmm. particular digital product that I just haven't finished yet um, because I've just been swamped with coaching and consulting and the other right. stuff. Um, I haven't finished yet. And so I'm like, I'm not ready until that's done. Right. But mm -hmm. listening to you now, I'm like, CP, don't be dumb because, you know, while you may not necessarily send people into the perfect funnel, you've got enough funnels already created that you could still nurture those relationships and you should just get Absolutely. Started. I see your eyebrows raised and, and, and that's, that's Trudon's <laughs> way of lecturing CP without lecturing. <laughs> <laughs> absolutely thought. absolutely because i didn't know what i was doing i just jumped in there and i was just like i don't even have i don't even know what i would lead people to and that's when i was just like let me just put them into a facebook group for now yeah. like i just knew i wanted to build the audience and i i was like okay as long as i can get them in the dm or get them to opt into this group then while i'm building out what the what the offer is going to be i'm sending them somewhere and i have their data yes Yes, I, yeah. I hear you. I hear you. I hear you. So you, you <laughs> see, you see how strategic Turdon is being with regards to it. It's like, yes, Clubhouse is great, and you can't complain because I've had people say, "Well, I don't like Clubhouse. It's this, it's that." Well, most of the time, people are not liking Clubhouse because they're not prepared to make any money from Clubhouse, or they're just not exactly. sure how to convert in mm -hmm. the Clubhouse world. And 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 it's just like the same thing that we've been teaching you, that we've both been teaching all of you out there for the past forever years. Any <laughs> any platform that you use, the strategy is to nurture nurture, provide good content, send them somewhere, get their email, get them on your list, and then yes. ultimately send them into an offer. It, it mm -hmm. still goes back to the, to the basics in the beginning. And Clubhouse is an amazing opportunity to take advantage of it now, while the Absolutely. algorithm is still amazing, while it's mm -hmm. still on the ground floor, right? Well, it's still, still free. <laughs> it's still free, right? I mean, that's huge. Um, what are your business transforming actions that you're taking? in 2021, that, that business oh. transforming actions. So I want you to okay. think about that as well. So this does tie into number two, the two, okay. the number two lead generation strategy is collaboration mm. over like collaboration is everything. Collaboration is everything on clubhouse. Collaboration is everything when it comes to leveraging other people's platforms, especially if you're growing your audience, you can literally collaborate with someone and leverage the audience of other people to build your audience because they, because you're being, because you're being in alignment with other people who are, already have a trusted audience then their audience is more than likely to trust you too and go to anything that you're doing. And so another lead generation strategy is um, that it's free. You know, well, sometimes it's free. Sometimes, <laughs> most times it's free. Um, but like, it's really like the, the whole leveraging other people's audiences. Like a lot of the opportunities I'm getting now is because I collaborated with Michael Stelsner, who's the CEO of Social Media Examiner. 
seminar. And so his audience comes to me all the time for stuff. Or um, like when I did the big room with uh, Russell Brunson and Amy Porterfield and, yeah. and all of those people, um, like then their audience got to know me and they already had a, a trusted audience for all this time. And now people trust me and they're going into the, the products and the services that I have because of the, when you're, when you're collaborating with other people, you're able to leverage their platforms to grow your audience. And that is great for leads as well. It's that, it's that same concept. When I think about the collaborations that, that um, my old school behind in business used to leverage all of my speaking engagements for. So yes. even in the beginning, when I didn't, when I didn't, charge for public speaking when I wasn't being paid for it in the beginning it was always a lead generation strategy for yes me. and I loved it too so I was giving away mm-hmm. content I was teaching but then I would be in front of large crowds of people that I would have never met any other way and yeah. because I'm giving that content and collaborating with it with an organization that they've paid to come to a conference for or that they already trusted so it's that same concept from mm-hmm. a social media perspective and I wanted to bring that up to folks if you think that oh I want to make sure I beef up my speaking catalog so that I can grow my audience Audience, that is along the same lines, whether you're speaking to uh, an online or wh- whatever you are, that collaboration Seriously. is that strategy that you are also contemplating. S- adding speaking to your repertoire is a collaboration strategy. And I want to make sure I mm-hmm. pointed that out as well. So that's absolutely. Worth it. And yeah, it's fun absolutely. too. And it's fun. And I love what you just said about speaking. I literally just hired a speaking coach that I've been working with because I'm like, Clubhouse is like speaking at an event every single yeah. day, like that you're on there. And like you're speaking when you have to be on camera on social media, you're like, it pays to get your speaking chops up. <laughs> Like it really does. Um, And so I love that you brought that up because it's so true. It's so true. It is. So what other transforming action are you taking? I mean, it's probably going to tie into your third strategy because you said collaborations, definitely clubhouse, right? Definitely. Yeah, definitely. What's your third transforming business action that you're taking? So the third one is really like the paid ads, paid ads and running that because a lot of times people are there, you know, uh, when you want to fast track what you're doing, you want to, you know, get leads really, really quickly. And you know that you have a launch coming up or because launching is really just a numbers game. Yep. And so you have to know how many people that you need in order to convert into your offer. And so sometimes the fastest way to do that when you have a small list or you don't have a lot of people there is to just run ads to whatever the offer is. And so even if you you are like growing and nurturing your audience online, not everyone is online all the time. So not everyone is going to see it. And so paid ads ensures that they see your content, ensures that they see you as a leader in, in your position as an authority in your space. And it also ensures that you're able to um, get leads, you know, relatively quick, more quickly than you would with the other ways that I mentioned. Yeah. I mean, the paid ads thing always scared the crap out of me because I'm like, <laughs> oh, my God, until I started using quizzes which I mm. love. Um, but also, you know, in our launches, when we started actually using paid ads in our launches, one of the things I loved about it is even if everybody that, because the paid ad was always to a free offer or to something like that, because mm. um, I found that those just cost less. I like them a lot more. <laughs> yeah. um, I just like them a lot more. The, the, the costs are like, Ooh, that's like, that's like 50 cent a lead. I could pay for that all day long. And you got to think yeah. of it that way. Cause back in the day I used to buy leads. I used to buy sheets of leads from like lead generation companies back oh, in the yeah. day before there was really social media. Yeah, this is all before social media. And I would probably wow. pay um, up to a dollar or a dollar fifty, even some instances, if it, if it was a great quality lead that came with the infamous email address that no one could get access to back in the day. Right. Uh, it was like $2 a lead. So wow. yeah, if I wanted 500 leads, I'd be spending a G. Yeah. Easy. Yeah. Easily. Easily. Yes. And the paid ads get you the, 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 I would send them there. And then for me, it's like, these are people that now are even a part of my list. Even if they didn't buy the offer in the end, mm-hmm. I'm growing my list as well. So yeah. I love, what's your favorite type of paid ad to send people to? Is it a webinar? Is it a, you know, a video where you send them? Um, sending to free webinars can get costly because the cost per, per lead to, to generate that ends up being a lot. But if you can get, but I would say it's my favorite only because you're able to, because even when I just ran the the um, I just ran a campaign to a paid uh, my paid training that I did, 
the thing about it is the people that that came from there and they opted into that webinar and even though it was a paid one um the quality of people that came through were good and i was able to then convert them into you know other offers after the training and so um even though it's more costly, I would say the webinar one, but even if you have like a really good freebie. So I'm thinking about even doing like a five day challenge or something like that to clubhouse because people want to know about it. So um, even if you have like a really good freebie and I say before you run paid ads, test first, test and tweak the offer first, make sure it's a viable offer that people actually want and that they're actually already getting before you roll it out and try to put money behind it because then you're just going to waste a lot of money. <laughs> Yes, I have been there. <laughs> I've been there, girl. Uh, which would made me stay away from paid ads for like two years. The, the, the experience. Yeah, because you can I, burn I had, through a lot of money. I had FBPST, PSTD, Facebook <laughs> Post Traumatic Stress Disorder. Yes. Girl, I was like, what? <laughs> I would have rather ha paid somebody to go knock on doors. Um, Cause that's what Seriously. I do back in the day. Right. That's cause I'm showing my age. So what, where can, where you have dropped so many amazing golden nuggets today. And uh, I know we, we, me and you have got to get on our schedule our next dinner for sure. Um, and you have, you dropped so many golden nuggets today. I can't even begin. I'm, 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 I, I'm going to watch this um, back myself to make sure that I can get my notes down because I didn't want to be that girl, like looking down and taking notes, but it was amazing. Where can everybody find you? Where would you want them to go? You want them to go to your IG? Um, so people can find me. Um, honestly, like, yeah, if you go to my IG, I'm the only Turdon in 7 billion people. So you can go to <laughs> Turdon.com. You can go to Turdon on any platform and I'm going to be the only one I guarantee you. <laughs> So Turdon on Insta, like whatever your 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 drug of choice is when it comes to social media platforms, um, whether it's Instagram, Facebook, I'm getting on TikTok now. Um, so anywhere that anywhere is there. But if you just want to know more about me, people I've worked with, then you can go to Turdon.com um, and find out more about me and the stuff that I've done speaking wise and all of that. And then if you want to just know more about Clubhouse and what I'm doing, what you can do with Clubhouse, you can just go over to ClubhouseDaily.com and join the community over there too. We're going to go ahead and make sure that we link to all of Turdon's social, all of the places that you can find her in the description below. So make sure that you check those out. We're going to also do a little flashy flash right now on the screen. There it is. All of Turdon <laughs> contact information. Ah. Right. Oh, I was trying to get the sound effect. Yeah. Ah. <laughs> there it is, y'all. There it is. Write it down. Take a picture. Screenshot it. Um, screenshot it. There you go. So it's perfect. Um, thank you so much for taking okay. the time out because I know you are busy, boo. I know you are busy. <laughs> I am, I have to tell you how proud I am of you. And uh, oh, when I see, you. and oh, just, you know, when, I, when I've when i always, when I've watched you, I'm always like, you know, I knew it in the very beginning. It, it just makes me feel like my successful entrepreneur radar is still yes. packed. <laughs> it uh, is. I knew and then I'm mentored by the best. Like you have been the best mentor during this process because I know there's times where I was just like about to have a meltdown. Like, I don't even know what I'm doing here. <laughs> and you swooped in like the amazing person you are. And you're like, and then we shut the restaurant down. <laughs> so, <laughs> Here's our step by step. This is right. <laughs> No. So thank you so much. Thank you so much. And I appreciate that. I appreciate you seeing it in me. I appreciate you adopting me as a mentee, <laughs> you know, um, to be able to just help me through those times that we all have as entrepreneurs where we just get stuck and we are like, okay, I don't know what to do next. And so yeah, like, you're like my uh, little sister. We always say that too. Whenever we see now, we're like this morning, we were like, wow, we could be sisters. Yeah. Right. <laughs> Yeah, and I was like, no, exactly. I think I'm too old to be. She's like, I'm like no, no, you're not. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> yes, and I and I have enjoyed um, working with you. I always get so much. It's 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 never really felt like a mentor mentee relationship as much as it's always felt like just a good you know relationship. I, I, it's yeah, like, it's like you're my I, business. I agree. Messy, you know, like my business. I, yes, um, because we're always on the same brain wave, and and that's why we can just go off on these tangents. You know, funnels and about stuff. software and funnels. 
technology <laughs> and strategy. It's yeah. And, and then I'm, I like come back with my list. You come back with your list. And then we're like, okay, so send me this. Here's the link. Here's that, you know, right. <laughs> exactly. I love it. I'm going to make sure yes. to put everything down in the description below. You guys make sure that you check out her Don. You will, if you need um, all the, the enlightenment and the guidance specifically around building your brand and making sure that you're growing yourself, definitely on clubhouse. If you yeah. are into clubhouse, I know the whole Android iPhone thing has become like a thing for people, but regardless, if you have an iPad, if you have a MacBook, I think it's no, no iPad or iPhone, you um, can get into it. And I would definitely recommend that before you dive deep, um, check out clubhousedaily.com so that Tardon can tell you what to do from the very beginning. And you don't have to- Yeah, I have the Clubhouse around. crash course in yeah. there too. You don't have to fumble around and figure your way out because everything is still as important there, right? To see these mm-hmm. kind of results. Your profile picture, what your bio says, what you have it linked to. And then you got to make sure you clean up your IG so that when people go there, it's important. So let mm-hmm. Tardon help you work through that, that, that process. I think that you guys will get so much from her. So thank, thank you, you so much. Thank boo. you. I appreciate you. <laughs> that was fire, wasn't it? And fun. I just love reconnecting with my students and seeing their growth and giving you content from people who are amazing and experts in their fields. And Turdon is definitely in that category. I just love her to death. And I know you guys do too. I know. So are you ready? Ready to go out there and start implementing some of the stuff that we were just talking about? Then get your ass and get up and get this money, boo. Okay. Don't forget. If you like this, then show me, smash that like button. Do not forget to subscribe right there in that bubble next to me because every single Tuesday I am here giving you the exact same types of golden nuggets that you just got today. And make sure you share this information so that other people who need it can actually get it as well. All right. And until next time, my loves, stay safe. Bye-bye.